During the eight years of the Obama presidency, more guns were sold in this country than ever before. Today, we've come here to the largest independently owned gun store in America to learn about the future of the gun industry. If you could just tell me a little bit about the shop. Sure, my father started back in the mid-50s as a coin shop, bought a coin collection that had some guns with it, and that got him started in the gun business. Was the gun industry strong in North Carolina back then? Nothing like today. Most gun companies went bankrupt between wars. The history of the gun business has been one of boom and bust. So looking around, it feels like we're in a, in a boom right now. Probably one of the biggest booms ever. How many different gun models do you guys have here? Thousands. Thousands. Competition, hunting, collecting, doomsday. Doomsday? Yes. Preppers, people that think that can have a nuclear attack or yeah. some type of pandemic. They're getting ready. Yes. What are the most popular guns that you sell? The most popular gun has been the AR-15 type, the military-looking gun. Bring it inside your shoulder just a little bit. Why do you own guns? Yeah. It's just like going to the golf course. Some people go for beers. Some should people shoot AR-15. <laughs> yeah. In the past decade, the gun industry has grown by an unprecedented amount. There are now over 130,000 federal licenses issued to sell firearms in America. Compare that to the estimated 14,000 McDonald's nationwide, you have almost 10 times as many potential places to buy a gun as you do a Big Mac. To accommodate this growth, gun manufacturing has expanded massively. So we're at Caltech. This is the largest gun manufacturer in Florida and one of the largest in the country. They're also the only gun manufacturer we contacted who is willing to let us film inside. Hey. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Good. Nice to meet you. Nice Chad. To meet you, Chad. Step on out here. This is our warehouse. This wow. is the front half of our CNC shop. Holy shit. We have three shifts, and we run them pretty much 24-7. Really? Yeah. Wow. What's your favorite part of your job? The fact that I make guns. Yeah. I love guns. You do? Yeah. He can do this with his eyes closed at this point, right? We do about 150,000 guns a year. Every year, the back order seems to get bigger. While manufacturing work nationwide has declined drastically since the 80s, the gun industry has actually created more jobs, growing 81% since 2008. What do you attribute this growth in Caltech to? I think with the political landscape being what it was over the last eight years, people really needed stuff. You know, they felt like their rights were going to be taken away, so they needed to get this, that, and the other before they couldn't get them anymore. The way the gun industry is portrayed by the media, how does the gun industry feel about that? We feel attacked, you know, and anytime you've got a political landscape that wants to put 260 people out of work, no matter what we're making, that's an attack. A lot of that is perpetuated by the media and the way they cover these, you know, these mass shootings and these terrible things that happen. So why do gun sales go up after mass shootings then? Every time that happens, the public that owns firearms, they want to get those things before they get banned. The phenomenon Chad describes actually defined the Obama era. It's a country we have been through this too many times. And we're going to have to come together and take meaningful action to prevent more tragedies like this, regardless of the politics. While Obama was pushing for tougher gun control laws after Sandy Hook, the three largest gun makers earned a record-breaking $247 million in profits the following year. The years 2009 to 2016 have been referred to as the Barack boom when five of the 10 deadliest mass shootings in recent American history occurred, and gun sales nearly doubled. It's not even the fact that a particular firearm was used in a shooting, it's the fact that everyone's scared that the government's gonna ban that particular gun. Now, circumstances have fundamentally changed. The eight-year assault on your Second Amendment freedoms has come to a crashing end. Donald Trump's win ensured that no gun control laws would be forthcoming, which sent gun stocks into a downward spiral. Without the fear of gun control, the firearms industry is missing its greatest marketing tool ever, so they're having to innovate. And there's no better way to ensure the future security of an industry than appealing to the next generation. The 
finish. All right, show me clear. Cool as ice. She competes against retired military, active duty law enforcement, border patrol. I get asked all the time, oh my gosh, are you worried when she starts dating? And I go, not at all. Shooter ready. Stand by. Last year at the Smith & Wesson Nationals, she placed fourth in the country in preteen rifle. That's big. Excellent. At last year's NRA convention, one of her sponsors advertised appearances at their booth for her. And I was stunned. I turned around, and there was a line of 40 adults that were lined up to get her autograph. Two hours of just signing autographs. That, that's insane. Industry-sponsored organizations donate tens of millions of dollars to youth shooting programs every year. And just like the X Games did for skateboarders, these shooting leagues have transformed their young participants into branding gold for gun businesses. Alamo Tactical have sponsored two pistols for her. Milan Levy custom built her AR 15s. Blade Tech provide all of the magazine holders, the gun belts, the different holsters. Gun for Hire, for the last three years running, has given her a check for $5,000 a year to help cover expenses. That's why his logo is so, uh, that's, so big. <laughs> In a lot of ways, it's like NASCAR. The more you contribute, the bigger you get advertised on the jersey. Cheyenne and Vanessa don't just shoot competitively. They're also part of an organization co-founded by Cheyenne's father that advocates for gun rights, known as You Shooters of America. So Cheyenne, you spoke to the New Jersey Senate when you were 10 years old. About what? At the time, they were trying to lower the magazine limit to 10 rounds. And I was saying how that could potentially hurt my career, and I no longer would be able to do it in that state if they had passed that law. And what happened? And they didn't pass it, they vetoed it. In their fight for broader gun laws, these kids have become America's youngest gun lobbyists. Hey guys, we're just an hour away to the governor signs of our bill. Are we gonna see the normalization of guns in this country on some level? I believe that the movement of gun control is almost on life support. I think we have a four-year window that if we do it right, we could actually put a serious, serious uh, setback on, on gun control. The next phase in the gun rights movement has already begun. This year, two separate bills were introduced before Congress, which would greatly expand the rights of concealed carriers, effectively erasing many gun-free zones within public schools and government lands. And the firearms industry is already in lockstep with this legislation as they accessorize to meet the needs of the concealed carry consumer. It's a breakaway opening. Everything is hidden under the waistband. Oh, I see. I can just snap my wrist and draw. I created um, a concealed carry line of holsters that were practical for women. You wouldn't know it, but I'm actually carrying three firearms and a knife. The name of the jacket is the executive. I'm ready to roll. Pepper spray, fully weighted, nine millimeter shield. Here's a knife. And in here, magazines. Concealed carry is growing in popularity as more people feel the need to protect themselves everywhere they go. But what they're protecting themselves from can vary greatly. Mohammed Shweb is a dentist who recently decided to conceal carry, even at work. Are you ready? Yes. Yeah. About a year and a half ago, I went and got my concealed weapons permit. It's a 357. and it'll, it'll do its job. It doesn't even have a safety on it. So all you have to do is pull the trigger. That's it. I will give this back <laughs> to you now. Dr. Shuaib got his concealed carry permit because as a Syrian Muslim, he felt increasingly targeted and in danger because of it. When you walk with your wife in the mall, you can see how people look at her like they just want to come and tear her scarf off, like it's bothering them or something. Mm. Is the Muslim community here feeling more targeted? Very. It's not like all of a sudden you have an influx of white supremacist people. It's like this constant negative rhetoric is infusing them with something. And you never know who's going to switch up on you. And that's why I carry it. Does it make you feel safer? No. The gun? No. Having it on you makes you think of the worst case scenario more. It's become an environment where nobody is comfortable. So we're standing outside of the Islamic Society of New Tampa. This mosque was attacked by an arsonist last week. 
and hate crimes like this have been on the rise since Trump started campaigning two years ago. Yes, I was calling with respect to the event on the 23rd and 24th of October, and I just wanted to let you know we're tired of your shit, and I'm going to fucking personally have a militia that's going to come down to your Islamic society, firebomb you, shoot whoever's there on site in the head. I don't care if they're fucking two years old or a hundred. Fuck you, fuck Allah, fuck your sand nigger fucking ass, get the fuck out of my country, you're going to fucking die. This is the kind of stuff the community deals with. It's, 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 you know, our work's been growing more important by the day, unfortunately. I mean, we've had a huge influx of calls for help, especially since Donald Trump started his campaign targeting the American Muslim community. If you take it back to November of 2015, mm -hmm. since then, unfortunately, we've documented a 500% increase in anti-Muslim hate crimes. Mosques being torched and burned down. Our own mosque, actually the mosque I go to, I do sermons at sometimes, was arsoned over this past weekend. How has the Muslim community in Florida responded to that? And unfortunately, many of us were pushed to start considering taking serious measures to arm and protect ourselves. If somebody's going to come at you or your family or your house of worship with violent intentions, you need to be ready. Especially I'm giving the sermon. You see somebody walking in, opening fire. What are you going to do? You know, are you going to have to duck for cover and watch your, your members getting slaughtered? Or can you whip out your handgun and do what you have to do to keep your community safe? Can you? Yes, and you should. With so many millions of guns being produced and purchased every year, and only 10 states requiring owners to report when they get lost or stolen, the illegal market for guns in America is huge. An upcoming Harvard and Northeastern University study estimates that 400,000 guns are stolen every year, many of which are sold on the black market. Researchers estimate that these illegal guns get used in as many as eight out of every 10 gun crimes. Primarily in poor urban centers like Chicago, Baltimore, and Detroit. That bitch pretty, ain't you? <laughs> <laughs> That bitch talk for itself, man. I already know it. So where do these guns actually come from? I mean, you got young niggas who breaking their cars, breaking their houses, stealing them. You can get them from crackheads. Niggas breaking into gun stores, just running in them bitches with cars. Where niggas might have bought them legally and don't want it no more, you feel me? Mm -hmm. That ain't rocket science. Yeah. Why don't you guys buy guns legally? Why do you have to come here? You can get it easier on the streets, man, without right. going to go through all that other bullshit. And are there a lot of people like you? Everybody selling guns depends on whoever got them. I mean, everybody know a nigga looking to buy a gun. For years, the Obama administration pushed for stricter gun control laws under the belief that they would curtail crime. But that era has given way to a different belief. The only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. It's a belief backed by an industry that values itself at over $50 billion and a president it broke spending records campaigning for. You know, when people can defend themselves and their families, we're all safer. Everyone should have a gun that's sane trained and have be able to use it for protection. I will defend my right to own a gun until they take it from my hands forcibly. I have a thousand rounds in my closet. I hold a thousand lives in my closet. You came through for me and I am going to come through for you.